I'm happy to report that the current generation iPod Classic, the seventh generation iPod, has sound quality equivalent to the older iPod, the iPod fifth generation or 5.5 generation, as you see on the right. Let me talk about that a little in this video. Audiophiles have preferred the older version of the iPod for many years because it uses a high quality DAC made by a company called Wolfson. The Wolfson DAC is the same company DAC that is in many high-end CD players. So true audiophiles have really preferred the older version of the iPod for many years because it had a better DAC than what Apple was currently producing and just sounded better, both on line out as well as the headphone output. But I'm happy to report the current version, the seventh generation version here on the left, um, sounds really good and you don't really have to worry about that anymore. It's not the Wolfson DAC, so it does sound a little bit different, but it sounds equal to, if not better, than the old version. Uh, the sound differences are the new one sounds a little bit more open and a little bit more revealing, and also the sound stage might be a little bit more. Uh, the older one with the Wolfson DAC sounds a little bit darker, for lack of a better word. So they both sound really good, and in my opinion, are audiophile quality when you're using the line out to go to a headphone app or something like that. Something else to consider is only the recent generations of the iPod Classic. This one, the seventh generation, and I believe the sixth generation before it, can be hooked up to a dock and get digital out. Apple has actually locked out the digital output on the fifth generation iPod. So if you have a dock that has a Toslink or Spitif, you know, coaxial digital uh, audio output or optical digital output, you won't be able to get that digital output from this old version of the iPod, but you can get it from this version. So that's something to be aware of. I'll be doing another video shortly on the dock that I use and, um, you know, I get digital out from this iPod directly into my, you know, desktop DAC and uh, I get really good digital sound doing it that way. And when I do it that way, that way I can benefit from a better DAC, you know, you know, nice audiophile desktop DAC, rather than relying on the built-in DAC of the iPod. So doing that actually bypasses the internal DAC of the iPod. But for general portable usage, I think both of these sound great, and you don't have to worry about getting a lower quality audio now with the current iPod Classic as of this video. Also, you get better storage because this one has 160 gigabytes and this one only has 80 gigabytes. Now note, I only play lossless files on my iPod Classic. So that means that when I rip a CD uh, in iTunes, I set it to Apple lossless. Uh, that way you're getting uh, a lossless file. You're getting the exact same quality that is on the CD. The files on those are definitely bigger, so they take up a lot more storage, uh, which is why I really prefer to get the iPod Classic over, say, like an iPod Touch, for instance. Uh, this is a purpose-built device for music lovers, and it pretty much only does music. You know, I don't need to run apps or do video or anything like that on my iPod Classic. Uh, this is just solely for music, and it's my preferred music listening device, and uh, it works really well. Again, uh, either portably or connected digitally up to my desktop DAC. Now, let me go ahead and show you my current quote-unquote audiophile portable setup here. I use the current 7th generation iPod Classic, which is a really nice design, very slim, uh, and this is in silver. And then I have currently the Pico Power um, headphone amplifier. And so what do I do? What I do is I put this in there under this rubber band. So let me, got it, let me do that off camera, and then you can see what it looks like when it's all together. It just sort of slides under the rubber band like that, and then uh, you just sort of position it so that it looks relatively nice and aligned. And then I've got this line out dock cable that goes right into the line out, you know, dock jack of the iPod. And that goes right into the input of the Pico Power amplifier. And then my headphones or earbuds or whatever would plug into here. So this is my current uh, portable setup and it works pretty well. It's pretty compact. Um, not too bad and you know maybe on camera it looks bulkier than it is but really I gotta say it's not too bulky and again it sounds really good because it enables me to bring my lossless music with me portably and not really sacrifice on audio quality at all when I'm traveling. Channel, You can see my channel for a prior review on this little portable headphone amplifier. I have done a review on that previously.
The other nice thing about the new iPod Classic is it's just a smaller form factor than the older one. This one's a lot thicker and might be a little bit heavier. I'm not really sure, but mainly it's just the thickness of it is much thicker. The new one is certainly a thinner device and also provides more storage. So the sound quality of this is excellent and I'm not really sacrificing anything, I don't think, by doing it this way. Do be careful though, because the sixth generation iPods definitely have a worse audio quality than either of these two. So this is the current seventh generation and the one on the right down there is the fifth generation. So basically I'm just saying avoid the sixth generation, the one in between. Uh, but both of these, the seventh generation and the fifth generation sound great and have really good audio quality. Certainly it's going to sound better with a headphone amp like I have here using the line out. Okay. But I've also plugged headphones directly into the headphone jack as well and it sounds pretty decent that way. But in my opinion, you're not really getting the benefit of playing the lossless files unless you're using the line out. Uh, you know, the headphone jack to me sounds the same whether I'm playing, you know, iTunes files or, you know, lossless files. So just some, just some miscellaneous thoughts on that. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them and I will see you in my next video.